Hey, Internet. Eric here. Well, Slashback Saturday again. First off, let me say I don't know why the glare on my phone is this bad. Um, but you're just going to have to deal with it. So, that out of the way. Slashback Saturday. Uh, if you don't know what that is, my buddy Joe, the whore man, over on his channel, every Saturday what he does, he picks a theme. If you choose to participate, you're supposed to find a slasher film that fits into said theme and just discuss it in a video. And uh, this week's uh, this week's category is slashback sl slashback slashers. Jesus, I'm gonna, I'm gonna my tongue's gonna be tied a lot uh, discussing this. Um, slashback slashers, and what that is is you discuss a slasher film that was previously discussed by uh, someone else on YouTube, um, and then just you know shout them out and what have you. So last year I, when I did this, I believe I did. Um, uh, the Dentist uh, and Hor Horrific Nightmares Jam uh, had previously uh, discussed that one. This year I went the Jennifer Tochi route. Uh, Jennifer Tochi, I picked her mainly because Two Bearded Losers just came back and she's probably our biggest, biggest supporter. So I wanted to give her a shout out as well. So Jennifer Tochi, recent or previously, geez, previously discussed uh, the subject in this video back for uh, Weird Weapons Slashers. And uh, I'll put the link to her video in the description here. But today, I discussed, thanks to Jennifer Trochi, you can't see the glare, Mountaintop Motel Massacre. Now, that cover there has always stuck with me since childhood. It's like, it's one of those covers that you never forget, like walking through the VHS or the, the video store, what have you. Um, I always remember that one, uh, Bad Dreams, and uh, what was it? Deadly Spawn. Uh, but Mountaintop Motel Massacre. Horrifying. Look at that. All right. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I discuss plot spoilers, specific scenes, all that jazz. This came out in 1983, I believe. Basic plot of this one is Evelyn, the crazy lady we saw on the cover. Um, she had She's just been released from the insane asylum. She was there for three years. She finds out her daughter was practicing witchcraft in the tunnels underneath the motel in her ho in their home. Kills her in a fit of rage and mental breakdown. And then for the rest of the film, she is killing people who go to the motel because she believes the spirit of her daughter is telling her to. Simple enough. Okay. Now, I believe Jennifer pretty much said she enjoyed this film. This one was tough for me, and I'll get to it. Overall, uh, first off, the girl who plays Evelyn was is really, really good. Okay, she's good at being psychotic, being crazy, talking to herself. Um, I got a little bit of uh, Mrs. Voorhees vibes, you know, from her, especially when she's actually hearing the voice of her departed daughter. Um, so I liked her a lot. And that's about it. Um, she was really good. The rest of the characters, I really didn't give a crap about. Um, sad to say. Um, they're, they're your stereotypical would-be victims. Um, and some of them are either just boring or not very likable. Or they you know, they don't stand out. You got the, the honeymoon couple. They're just there to have, have sex. You got the two cousins that are picked up on the roadside by a would-be record producer who's just feeding them lines so he could sleep with them. Um, and you just got a couple other people. You got two, uh, yeah, no one special. But the girl who plays Evelyn is really good, really good at being creepy. Um, for I knew I was in trouble when uh, when the movie starts off and we see New World Pictures. Now, and New World Pictures is Roger Corman. Now, don't get me wrong. I say I knew I was in trouble. I'm also a huge Roger Corman fan, but... He's also hit or miss. You know the quality isn't going to be there. Um, and you know what? I'll say this for a Roger Corman produced type movie with no budget. The gore is actually pretty good. I mean, I'm not going to be able to praise much about this film because a lot of it was it's just really, really boring. The gore is actually pretty good. Um, Evelyn is... <laughs> when she's not using snakes... And cockroaches to terrorize her guests. She's got like a little sickle. And there's a scene where she kills one of the um, 
My cousin's in the bathroom. She takes a swipe. We see, you know, a little blood splatter on the wall. But then we see the after effect. And there's, like, skin, like, carved off the victim's face. We see the teeth underneath. So that's a really good effect. Um, one person gets impaled in the chest with it. And while they're doing the whole, you know, holding the the weapon, you know, to, to keep it in place type of gag, um, we see some good blood effects, you know, dripping blood effects around them. Um, one person gets bitten by a snake. And um, that, effect, you know, he's bitten off screen and he gets, does the whole, oh, you know, grab my face thing. But throughout the rest of the film, the, his face swells up more. So that the makeup effects on that was pretty good. And then uh, when Evelyn is taken out, she's taken out in a really cool way. Eventually she gets a her sickle to the throat. And um, I liked that final confrontation. I guess it was a reshoot because Roger Corman like wanted more blood or something. Um, she gets in a struggle with one of the, the, the final people. I think it's one of the guys, actually, not one of the girls. Um, and the cavern, the underground cavern, yeah, the underground cavern. That one that start. I'm gonna talk about that. They start, you know, collapsing, and she gets her sickle to her throat, and it's a quick cut. But we see her body, and she's slowly, you know, she's pushed up against the against the wall. We get the sickle in the throat. We get the blood dripping. It looks really good. So for a movie that pretty much has no budget and no name actors, the gore is really good. The actress who plays Evelyn is really good. Again, the problem is no one else you give a damn about. And it's really, really boring. The beginning, when Evelyn has her mental breakdown, you know she, you know she's, she's, she's nuts because she's yelling at her daughter, and her daughter's doing her little witchcraft thing, praying to Satan or whatever. She got like a goat and a couple other animals. Evelyn's nuts because there's a guinea pig in her, in her garden, and she tells uh, her daughter to come get it, or else she's gonna chop it up. She does. So and then you get some blood effects shot on 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 Evelyn's clothes. And then when Evelyn goes downstairs and takes out her daughter, uh, she takes out all the animals there and her daughter. And the effects on her daughter are very cheap, but I like it because I think I've mentioned before, I like when the blood looks like paint. It's, it's just like a really cool visual effect. It's like Herschel Gordon Lewis, you know, that type of stuff. So the daughter has like some blood splatter on her face or paint splatter, however you want to say it. So that looks good. But there's a lot of... Like, there's no explanation why there's underground caverns or, like, you know, walkways and to get from here to there. I mean, it's cool because that shows how she, she you know, she's got trap doors where she can peek up during the, the motel and this and that. It, it did remind me of, like, the Friday the 13th remake. That explained why Jason, you know, teleports or how he can get from here to there so fast. But they didn't under explain why that was used. And then the ending is really confusing to me because I think, well... Not really confusing. I'll say disappointing because I would have liked this film more. Hold on. I would have liked this film more if it was more just Evelyn going crazy, you know, because she was out of the the nut house for so long and then she just finally snapped again. Well, she's talking to her dead daughter, right? And her dead daughter's telling you, telling her to kill all these people, yada yada. So it gave me this, like I said, Friday the Thirteenth, Mrs. Voorhees vibe. But then at the end, after Evelyn is taken out and the survivors go away with the uh, with the police and the ambulance and this. We see the ghost of Evelyn's daughter just standing there watching everybody go away. And then, like, the vacancy sign pops up. I, I didn't like that. I didn't like how it really was the ghost of Evelyn, Evelyn's daughter, telling her how to do this. I think it would have been cooler if it was just her going cuckoo. You know, she just lost it um, type of thing. Um, yeah, I... <laughs> I'm sorry that, you know, Jennifer, I think you really enjoyed this film. So I'm like, I'm sorry there really isn't much to talk about when discussing this because not a lot really happens in Mountaintop, <laughs> Mountaintop Motel Massacre. That's what I mean about, you know, me and my, uh, you know, doing the tongue twisters. Um, I didn't really care for it. I don't really recommend it. I mean, I'm glad I finally saw it. Now I know what the hell was behind, you know, that spooky uh, VHS box cover. But wasn't very good. The problem is, is I think I said it. I did a uh, oh, in the we in uh, the previous video, you know, I did for Two Bearded Losers. We talked briefly about the Black Christmas remake, 2019. The biggest, I think I said, the biggest cardinal sin like uh, a movie can do is be boring. 
and my and that's what Black Christmas 2019 was. And for me, that's also what <sighs> Mountaintop Motel Massacre was for me. Is overall, I, I sad to say, it was just really really boring. Um, good gore. The actress who played Evelyn was great, but other than that, nothing happened. It took too long for the murders to happen, too spaced out, and I really didn't like the reveal at the end. I thought it was pretty lame. So, that's it. I guess I can say um, I will put the link to Jennifer's video um, in the description below. She does a lot better job than me uh, discussing the film. Uh, she finds more good in it than I do, but you know what? Everything's hit and miss, and we all have just different opinions. But so that's it. And I want to say this: uh, like and subscribe, all that jazz. Comment, comment below. Tell me if you've seen this, all that jazz. But I'm going to end the video with this. This is sadly the last uh, slashback video. Uh, Joe, the horror man, has uh, decided to stop doing slashback for a while, um, and uh, he says it may return. It may not, but he's just he he he's ending it as of right now. And I do want to say to Joe. Um, Thank you for doing the slashback. Uh, I remember, oh God, I've been doing slashbacks for at least a year, maybe two. Um, Try to do it as much as I could when schedules allowed it. I've seen a lot of good films thanks to the slashback. You know, I've discussed, I think I've discussed the entire Candyman franchise because of slashback. I've discussed three out of the four um, sleepaway camps because of slashback. I found some really cool... Uh, Movies I've never seen before because of Slashback. The Once Upon a Time at Christmas. The Nights Before Christmas. Um, I finally sat down and watched um, uh, Slumber Party Massacre. That turned out to be a lot of fun. Um, so a lot of good has come from the Slashback. Some bad came from the Slashback. Slumber Party Massacre 2. Uh, Ice Cream Man. You know. Uh, but you know what? All kidding aside, Joe, this was fun to do. Um, thank you for welcoming me into your little circle. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. Uh, I'm going to miss doing Slashback. I do hope it comes back. But if not, it's been a wild ride. Uh, a lot of fun. So with that, I will say thank you, Joe. I uh, hope this returns. If not, it is what it is. It's been a fun experience. Um, even though the Slashback is done with, go check out the Horror Man channel. Give them a sub. Um, lots of cool concepts on that channel. A lot more cooler than Mountaintop Motel Massacre. But, um, all kidding aside, thanks, Joe. It's been a blast. Cheers.